Welcome, pilots! This video is part of a series showcasing the use of regular cruisers for combat site exploration in EVE Online. If you're a young Minmatar pilot within your first month of skill training, and you're looking for PvE combat against NPC pirates, this video is for you. If you're a brand new player flying a frigate, you might want to watch my Minmatar Frigates for New Players video first. That video guide will introduce you to combat site exploration in Minmatar space discussing early skill training, weapon systems, and frigate fits suitable for running some of the easier combat sites. This video will pick up where it left off, guiding you through your journey to running slightly more difficult combat sites in a cruiser. You can find the fits presented in this video on my website over at RileyEntertainment.com, as well as additional PvE fits for all Minmatar cruisers for both Alpha and Omega pilots. If you're still waiting on skill training before buying your first Minmatar cruiser and want to try out a destroyer in the meantime, I might recommend this Thrasher fit. You'll be able to run sites like the Angel Creel Corp mining site, so long as you can find one that isn't bugged out, as well as the Angel Hideout. These sites are restricted to destroyer-class ships or smaller, so you won't be able to run them in a cruiser. To fly Minmatar cruisers, there are a handful of skills you'll first need to train. The most obvious is Minmatar Destroyer, followed by Minmatar Cruiser. Since the combat-focused Minmatar Cruisers have bonuses to projectile turrets, you'll also need to train Medium Projectile Turret. Minmatar Cruisers generally also have drone bays large enough for a full flight of light drones, making it important to train drones as well. I recommend getting all of these skills to level 3 before you actually buy your first cruiser, and then continue to train drones up to level 5. I also consider some of your shield and engineering skills to be extremely important, as they open up many new fitting opportunities. Training shield upgrades reduces the power grid need for shield extenders. I recommend training this to at least level 3 for the time being, with a plan to train to level 4 later in order to be able to fit Tech 2 shield extenders and shield amplifiers. Shield operation and shield compensation are also important for the use of shield boosters. For now, I recommend training this to at least level 3, again with a plan to train to level 4 later. Training energy grid upgrades to at least level 2 allows you to equip a large cap battery, helping you run your shield booster for much longer during combat. Training weapon upgrades to level 4 allows you to equip Tech 2 gyro stabilizers. It also opens up advanced weapon upgrades, which reduces the power grid consumption of all weapon turrets and launchers. Once these core skills have been trained, I also recommend continuing to train your gunnery and drone support skills. For weapon turrets, Minmatar pilots can actually postpone training controlled bursts since projectile turrets do not use your capacitor. The remaining support skills include motion prediction, rapid firing, sharpshooter, surgical strike, and trajectory analysis. For drones, it includes drone avionics, Drone Navigation, Drone Durability, Drone Sharpshooting, and Drone Interfacing. Minimitar pilots can start out with just light drones in cruisers. You can also consider training hull upgrades and mechanics to at least level 3, and perhaps to level 4 if you plan on fitting an active armor tank. For the purpose of this video, I'll be recommending a shield tank, which holds up much better when fighting against the Angel Cartel. The core navigation skills are also useful getting to at least level 3. This includes navigation, evasive maneuvering, warp drive operation, and acceleration control. My first Minmatar PvE combat cruiser fit is a rupture fit with artillery, an afterburner, and an active shield tank. The rupture has bonuses to medium projectile turret rate of fire and damage. Its drone bay and bandwidth allow for up to one medium drone and four light drones, though I tend to just stick with light drones, giving me a single spare in case I lose one. The rupture is much more forgiving on your power grid than the stabber, making it a great candidate for your first PvE FET cruiser. I chose the Metal Level 4 650mm artillery, as these offer the most effective range and damage output when taking into account the ship's power grid restrictions for younger players. I fit a probe launcher to the utility high power slot, letting you run both combat anomalies or combat signatures without having to dock up to change modules. To make the ship fully cap stable, I fit a large compact cap battery in the mid slots, two restrained capacitor flux coils and a compact power diagnostic system in the low slots, and two capacitor control circuit rigs. 
The active shield tank consists of two medium shield boosters and a core defense operational solidifier rig. This puts the shield boost rate above 80 hit points per second, which is quite impressive for a regular cruiser. The two Tech 2 gyro stabilizers help bring the ship's total DPS up to around 190. The drone bay is filled with warriors, which deal explosive damage. In the Minmatar Frigate's video guide, I recommended combat anomalies like the Angel Hideaway, or once you've gained some PvE experience, the Angel Refuge. These are still great sights to run, no matter what ship you're flying. But now that you're in a cruiser with a much stronger tank, I can also recommend the Angel Den. There are two variations of these sights. With the recommended rupture fit, you should be able to handle either without any issue. In general, you can stick with fusion ammunition at a range of about 15 kilometers. Use keep at range when engaging with frigates or destroyers. And orbit when engaging with missile batteries or cruisers or larger ships. If you find your tank is starting to fail, you can always pull range and switch to depleted uranium or even nuclear ammunition. If you find you're frequently missing smaller targets, engaging outside of 20 kilometers with depleted uranium may be helpful, as it provides a small bonus to tracking speed. If you're itching to use your probe launcher, your new cruiser is quite capable in several extra combat signatures that I left out of the Minmatar Frigate's video guide. The first is the Angel Lookout. Your tactics here won't need to change much from a den site. The second site is the Angel Repurposed Outpost. While you won't be as competitive as more experienced pilots flying faction cruisers, this is a great site to gain PvE combat experience. You'll face a large number of frigates through five pockets, so expect it to take at least 15 minutes. The loot potential can be quite high if you get particularly lucky. As you continue to train your skills, there are several other fitting options you might consider while flying a rupture. You can try upgrading to 720mm artillery cannons for a little extra range and damage, though this updated fit has to give up quite a bit of its shield boost amount to do so. This upgrade is more beneficial once you've fully trained medium projectile turret, along with all of your gunnery support skills. If you find yourself outside of Minmatar space, you might be looking to switch to an active armor tank. This rupture fit would do well against Blood Raiders or Sanchez Nation. An entirely different option involves switching to auto cannons, which require you to engage at much closer range. My next Minmatar PvE combat cruiser fit is a stabber fit with auto cannons, an afterburner, and a passive shield tank. The stabber has bonuses to medium projectile turret rate of fire and fall off. Its drone bay is slightly smaller than the ruptures, allowing for a single flight of light drones. This fit uses the Metal Level 4 220mm autocannons, along with two Tech 2 gyro stabilizers, to achieve over 220 DPS. The single light missile launcher feels like a bit of a meme, but it does give you just a little extra DPS. The passive shield tank uses up the majority of the fitting slots, with three shield extenders, two shield power relays, and three core defense field extender rigs. This gives your shield plenty of extra buffer, and manages to achieve a passive shield recharge rate of over 50 hit points per second. With this stabber fit, you'll have no trouble running all the combat sites previously mentioned. Fighting with autocannons actually feels quite smooth, as they have much better tracking. The drawback with closer range combat will become apparent in sites with high incoming DPS. If you're looking for a rather extreme challenge, the provided rupture fit is just barely capable in a site called the Angel Cartel Occupied Mining Colony. This site is extremely dangerous, with high incoming damage that only gets worse with all the ships that hit you with target painters. On my Alpha character, I found I had to whittle down all of the ships in the second room at range before engaging with the Domination Excavator. I did have to warp out on several occasions as I tested the limits of the ship's tank. So if you do decide to take on this challenge, play it cautious and be ready to warp to a Celestial at a moment's notice. And of course, be aware there's a chance you'll lose your ship. You can get a lot of mileage out of cruisers as you continue to train your skills. Bit by bit you'll gain access to better modules, gain more CPU and power grid for better fitting options, and once you've trained medium artillery or autocannon specialization, access to Tech 2 ammunition. On my main Omega clone character, for example, this upgraded artillery fit rupture manages to get over 320 DPS with fusion ammunition and a shield boost rate of nearly 130 hit points per second. 
Now that you've expanded your horizons in a cruiser, and are hopefully making plenty of ISK, you might be looking to try out one or both of the Navy Faction cruisers. The Stabber Fleet issue will feel like a stronger version of the regular Stabber, with its higher hit points and extra low power slot. It also features a bonus to tracking speed, and much higher power grid, allowing it to fit artillery cannons similar to a rupture. This dual boost artillery fit with Caldari Navy Hornets should fare better in the Angel 4 of 10 than my test run did with the rupture. The Scythe Fleet issue is a rather unique ship with bonuses to both medium projectile turret rate of fire and missile damage. Couple this with its uniform slot layout and it offers a lot of versatility in terms of fitting. This fit using heavy missiles is able to include a multi-spectrum shield hardener, giving its shield tank an edge over the other Minmatar cruisers. Alpha pilots will find much better success in more difficult sites, such as the Angel 4 of 10 with this ship. Most combat site explorers eventually end up in special pirate faction cruisers such as the Gila or Orthrus. If you like the idea of sticking with Minmatar ships, the Cinnabal is another good option. There are still more combat sites to explore beyond those I've mentioned throughout this video, such as the Watch or Vigil. Once you have the ISK to easily replace your ship, I encourage you to fearlessly try them out for yourself. If you ever need a little help running any combat site you find in high security space, you can check out my comprehensive library of video guides right here on this channel. If you're looking for a way to support me directly, I recently started a Patreon account for bonus gaming content. You can find the link for it in the description box below. Stay tuned to Riley Entertainment for more EVE Online combat site guides, and smash that like button if you enjoy my content.